Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be replacing this stock radio, and that's Audi A4. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to remove this factory radio. We'll head over to the bench to show you the new radio that we're going to be installing, including the dash kit, and also the wiring harness. And we'll get back here and get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. Okay, so we got to get this radio on out here. Now we can do so with using the stereo removal keys for this Audi. Now these keys specifically go into these holes up and around the radio, there's four of them. As we slide them in, it allows us to slide the radio on out. Now to give us a little bit more leverage, I do have a pick tool here as well to help us pull a little bit more effectively. So let's go ahead and grab a stereo key here. Um, you'll notice that they are labeled uh, where they go. So we're gonna go ahead and slide it on into the radio. You'll notice there is a rounded side and a flat side. That rounded side faces towards the radio. Push it in until you hear a click. Once you get that clicked into place, go ahead and put all of them in. And again, remember the rounded edge faces towards the center of the radio. Let's get all four of these in here. Make sure they click into place. And that essentially is unlocking the locking mechanism of the radio. Now, when we grab it, we're going to force these towards the outside away from the radio. And what that's going to do is unlock those. Now we're going to grab our pick tool because that's going to help us get a little bit more leverage. We're going to grab that pick tool, grab the faceplate there. And while we're pushing the locking mechanism outward, this is going to allow us to slowly work that radio out. Now this does take a little bit of time here. We're gonna speed up our video. Um, and essentially we're just wig wiggling it free again, using that pick tool to kind of give us some leverage. Now just taking a closer look where the keys slide through the faceplate here, they essentially are unlocking these metal tabs that stick out which hold the radio in place. As you slide those keys on in, it pulls those locking tabs towards the radio, allowing it to slip right past the uh, trim bezel. So with the radio out, go ahead and disconnect all the harnesses attached to the back of the radio. Now your main harness has a little sliding lock. You pull the sliding lock backwards and then the rest of the harness should just slide on out. As you can see, once we unlock it, it comes out pretty easily. Now with the factory radio removed, we can set that guy off to the side. We're done with it. Let's go ahead and head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. Okay, so here at the bench, the parts that we're gonna need for the install, first and foremost is the radio that we've chosen to go with. It's this Pioneer Double Den uh, head unit that features Bluetooth, aux, USB. You can also get some with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which we can link down in the description of the video. Now to accommodate this aftermarket radio in the factory location, we will need a dash kit. Now this vehicle calls for this Skosh uh, dash kit. It's the AU2391B. It accommodates both a double or single DIN radio and this will fit in the factory location. Wiring wise, we do need a smart harness, which we're using this pack interface. It is the RP4-AD11. This both retains bows or the non bows trim levels. So you can use these parts regardless of the trim level of your vehicle. Now we'll finally also need an antenna adapter and this is the Metro 40-EU56. Now lastly here, we like to use these aux and usb flush mount adapters because it can relocate those plugs on the back of the radio to our desired location so at this point of time what we need to do is go ahead and pull the harness from the box as well as the harness adapter from our pack module we're going to get everything soldered up color for color and prepare our wiring connections to get this radio installed all right so we got everything pulled out of the box now you may notice with your pack harness kit it comes with two versions of the harness this one and that one. Now this harness here with the red plug, this doesn't fit our vehicle. So we're gonna set that off to the side. We don't need it today. And this guy is the one that we will use in our install. Now we'll also need an antenna adapter and this one's special because it has an amplified circuit built in to help with our AM and FM reception. Finally, here's our main harness that came with the Pioneer radio that we'll solder into the rest of the harness. We also have our steering wheel control 
um, harness adapter, which we'll need to plug into the back of the radio. Finally, this is our smart harness module that we'll need here today. Now with all these parts, what we're gonna do is essentially get them plugged in. You'll notice our main harness here has these RCA plugs that hang off. This is the low level input that'll connect to the RCA outputs of the radio in case you have the Bose. Now if you don't have the factory Bose sound system, you'll just connect every single wire and your speaker wire outputs to the main harness there. Pretty straightforward and simple. Now your pack instructions will walk you through this in great detail. Now what we'll need to do is actually solder everything up color for color and we'll heat shrink those connections uh, once those connections cool. Finally, we have our antenna circuit that we'll need to hook up to the accessory wire in our We harness. went ahead and prepared our harness. Now we stripped both ends and essentially what we'll do is match for the most part color for color. Now pack audio is known for kind of switching things up a little bit. We'll go over those wiring uh, notes here in just a moment, but it's always advised to go through the manual with your pack harness prior to making your connections, just so you can ensure that everything is being connected correctly. Okay, so at this point in time, we're gonna start making your connections. Like I said, we're gonna be soldering here today. If you don't have the means to solder, you can always use some butt connectors or preferably wire on wire using some crimp caps don't use wire nuts as they are not designed for an automotive environment. All right, so we went ahead and finished soldering up our wiring for the most part color for color. And again, we're gonna go over those special connections. Now, starting off with your speaker wire, like mentioned before, if you have the factory amplified sound system, you technically don't need to hook up your speaker outputs from the radio because we're gonna instead use the RCA outputs from the radio to supply the Bose amplifier, the signal it needs, and then the Bose amp will actually power your speakers instead. We hooked them up just for a visual represent representation here. So you can see essentially your color for your speaker wires are identical, color for color. You don't have to make any special connections there. And then obviously we're gonna move our heat shrink up and over those connections once they cool. Now for our other connections, uh, blue white is your amplifier turn on and you have to get that one hooked up or else that Bose amplifier won't turn on when the new radio does. So make sure you do so. That one's also color for color. We also kept a little lead off in case we had an aftermarket amplifier down the road. And then finally, we have our, what they call the navigation outputs according to PAC. And these are our special connections. So this has a purple white on it. And this one does too. The, this one on the Pioneer side is your reverse gear trigger wire, but it is not the case on the pack side. Your reverse gear trigger wire, according to our pack instructions here, reverse gear trigger is solid green, not purple white. Purple white, according to pack on the pack side, is a vehicle speed sense. Red white is your parking brake. And so those are the ones that are different. So you gotta double check to ensure that whatever wire you're connecting it to is indeed for the same purpose, regardless of the color. So what we did is we hooked up our reverse gear trigger wire on a radio to the solid green wire in our navigation outputs. We hooked up our parking brake wire to the red white wire on our pack. And the purple white on our pack side is vehicle speed sense. It's not supported by the radio. So we cap that off here. Um, and then uh, there's also a yellow black, which in most circumstances is a mute, but it's not used in this application. So we don't hook that up either. So that's it for our wiring. Again, we're gonna move the heat shrink up and over those connections and shrink it down with the heat gun. And then remember these ends are what connect into the RCA outputs from the back of the radio. Um, white will be your front left, gray right here is your front right, green is your rear left, and purple is your rear right of those RCA outputs. Those will need to connect to those corresponding ports on the back of the radio. Blue, it says Bluetooth, uh, but according to our pack instructions, it's not used in this application. So it, it, it doesn't go anywhere. It'll just hang out in the back of the dash. Okay, so we got everything wired up here. Everything's been heat shrinked and uh, shrunk down. Uh, we added our amplified antenna right into our accessory there. Because we have this guy, this is a relay, this puts out 10 amps. If you didn't have this in your adapter, then per the instructions, you're probably putting out only one amp. So you can't support 
really much else besides triggering the radio to turn on. We have the built-in inline relay that puts out 10 amps, so we can hook up our accessories, including uh, our amplified antenna, as well as uh, a backup camera, which we're gonna add in a different video. So at this point in time, we've hooked everything up. All we're gonna do is grab some Tessa tape. We're gonna wrap our harness and uh, protect it a little bit more in the dash, just like factory. All right, so we went ahead and finished our wiring harness adapter. It's all prettied up with the test of tape and it is ready to be installed. Now looking closer, here's our antenna adapter that'll plug in. We also have our main harness here and RCAs there as well. Um, we have our remote turn on wire for an external amplifier and power wire for our backup camera. These ends will plug into the RCA outputs of the radio if you have Bose. And then finally here, super important, on the pack module you have to set the dial according to the radio that you're looking to install using the instructions provided by the pack you got to do that before you plug it in ours is happens to be seven because we're doing a pioneer once we've set that we can plug our harness into that port and go ahead and get our harness installed in the vehicle with that being said that's all done at this point of time we have to turn our attention to get the dash kit installed on the radio Right, so now at this point of time, we got our side brackets mounted onto the radio. So that's all done using the supplied hardware that came with the Pioneer. Now for the dash bezel itself, the bezel actually doesn't clip in. It doesn't attach to uh, the side brackets. You'll actually have to be conscientious on how you mount the side brackets on the radio to give you the appropriate depth so the dash bezel can meet up without any gaps. So we're back here in the car. Now we're finally ready to start running our wire and making our connection. So let's go ahead and grab the wiring harness that we've prepared on the bench. Get that plugged on in. And again, before you plug this in, you gotta make sure you set your pack module to the correct dial based on the radio you're installing. Locks into place, just like so. Let's grab our antenna adapter. That also should just clip right on in. Now we can kind of start tucking this down. What we also did is hooked our RC cables up to the harness that hooks to our Pioneer. All right, now we can start hooking up our radio. Okay, with all those connected, let's go ahead and start tucking everything back into the dash here. All right, so the radio is all back in. Do a final test here. All right, everything is working great. Um, that's about it for this install with the radio in. Um, that completes our job today. Now, if you wanna see how we did a backup camera on this double den aftermarket radio on this Audi, go ahead and check the link in the description. We'll walk you through step-by-step -step on how to get one installed on this vehicle. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time and we'll see you in the next video.